Hi guys, Keith Argenberg Farms. It is mid-September. Uh, time's going fast this season. And it's also starting to get dark out. You can see the twilight behind me and the beautiful sunset getting ready to form around me. But today I'm gonna take you out to the U-Pick area and show you how you can spot signs of compaction. This has been a traditional agriculture farm out here from about well, this whole entire field block, everything that I'm standing on for years and years. So a big tractor was ran around here a lot. And by a lot, I mean every single year, a couple times a year. They happen to develop little patterns as they move around the fields because of their equipment. And that's where you hit your compaction. I've noticed it from year to year when I go through and broad fork and do everything, other things out here. So let me go out in the field and show you. So there are two primary ways to develop compaction. One is with, of course, a rototiller where you drive over the same area over and over again. You spend your tines at the same depth constantly and down below where the tines hit the bottom of their whirl, at that little bottom, they pack and pack and pack. And you'll create a hard pan across your whole entire surface. That is where the broad fork comes in very useful. Also ripping tines too, which I'll show you later. The other type you can get is from driving over the same area over and over and over again. Traditionally, this was row cropped. The tractor drove back and forth like this. I have found two major areas consistently of where it's compacted. There's one set here and here, and then here and here, and then up in this bed, same thing, about here and here and here and here. And that's because the two lines of the tractor tires come through like that and they go up the field and down the field. They try to avoid going over the same path over and over again, but inevitably they do. So I could really, really feel it when I broad fork. And I can feel it even more and more when I do some rippers with the uh, ripping tines. So out here, it's a little bit harder to spot now with the peppers. Might have to turn you around to get a little bit better view. But you can definitely see a difference in color. Okay, there it is right there. See that yellow? And that little bit of yellow, and there's green in between, and green in between. There is where it's compacted. And there's the other set where it's compacted. So we should be able to come down here. There's a little, and there's another stripe right there. So those are the paths that the tractor was actually driving through when they were running this field. It might not have been intentionally that they hit that same point every time, but over time, it just ended up there more frequently than not. And a lot of that now is because a lot of the tractors are GPS controlled. So they literally come out here and they ring around the field and then push the trace button and it just goes and traces it. So it just runs the same path over and over again. I do know that they were getting better before I started kicking them off, that they started going diagonally when they did their disking out here or when they went in and ablated. It actually, you know, cut the field, knocked the weeds down. But the majority of the time, they went the same exact path every time. So now we're a little closer here. So it's about from here to about here. And you can see it's not just one that they went on this path. They were here and then they were here and they were here. They were just in this general area every time they went back and forth. Same thing right here. A little bit more pronounced. And it's just right there. You could actually see it more. I'm looking around right now. And past years, I have done some ripping out here, but I have not done a lot. I had some taller crops out here. It'd be a little bit easier to say. See. The okra, of course, you really can't see that. That stuff bores deep. It just shoots a thing right down. But anything more shallow rooted, the roots go down and they hit it and they just go sideways. So it never really penetrates and goes deeper than anything else. The flowers are so drought resistant, it's really hard to tell. But primarily, I mean, this is the way to tell. 
in a fruiting crop like this, you've got nice green and then you've got yellow band. And a lot of that can be caused by you or the previous uses of the lands. So I'll go show you a couple tools of how to actually fix the problem of having compacted soil. So this milled Johnny's broad fork, simple five tines, well used, I've used it for years. Real simple to use, you stab it, you step on it, you wiggle back and forth, you lean back and you pop the soil. This is actually really well broken soil. When I used to do this, so you can really feel when you hit hard spots, I'd always lean back and get there, like chunks bring you around and show you. So when you hinge down, you actually hinge up a chunk of soil. And you let it go and bring it back. Do it again. Step it down. Kind of hard to do and point the camera at the same time. And you lean back. You crack it again. And by doing this, you're actually breaking and opening up the soil without inverting it. And it really helps to aerate it. If you add compost to it directly to the top, as you come back through with the tilter, or a very light field working tool, the only thing you will do is drop it down into the cracks you've now made. So you're not inverting, you're not bringing up the weed seeds that are down here. And when you put compost over the top, it falls into the crevices and it'll actually go in deeper, helping to work your soil quicker without bringing up all the grass and weed seeds that we've seen earlier this year that I did by not doing things this way. So this is a great tool. Problem is when you have this much to do and that, and you start playing back over there in acreage blocks, it just is not practical anymore. For just this and that, I did it for years and also playing with the other tunnels over there and the other plots. But once you get larger scale, it really honestly is not practical. And that's when you start getting some ripper tines. So I'll take you over to the tractor and show you those. So these are ripper shanks. I have these on a solid bar, a two inch toolbar. This toolbar is a wonder bar module toolbar system which is a great piece of equipment because you can change everything around and do whatever you want with it um, right now i currently have just the rippers on here i have them set at their max depth because that's all the deeper they go i like them to go a little bit deeper and this is about all the more this little tractor will pull this is a 50 20 which i can't tell if it's a 25 horsepower or a 20 horsepower because it's rated 20 horsepower at the pto but I believe it's actually a 25 horsepower tractor. Either way, two wheel drive. I got turfies on there because that's what it came with. Um, I've done other videos on this before. Got wheel spacers on here, so I straddled my beds correctly. So I've got the tires on 48 inch centers. So I'm gonna take it, get it on the bed and kind of show you what it does and basically how much quicker it is. I've actually did this whole field earlier this year. And the one thing with the broad fork, which you really can't see down there, you can kind of see the paths. You come up the bed and you only get the bed. I actually found out with the ripper, when I rip with it, it actually will shatter the walk paths on both sides as well. Because I tried to dig on them to tarp and use them as weight on the tarp. In previous years, I'd get chunks out of the walk path and it was like a chunk, like a brick, and you'd sit it down. Last time, I picked it up and it just fell apart. The whole thing was just shattered all throughout. Which would make me think is better in the aspect of actually getting rid of compaction, but not necessarily the same benefits of aerating the soil and helping to create and maintain your soil biome and actually getting compost down deeper into the soil. But that's a debate for a whole nother video. But for now, I'm just gonna show you what these tines do, because quite frankly, it's getting dark. You can start to see beautiful little sunset behind me.
So here is the comparison of both these beds. There has not been anything growing in here in quite some time. But you can see there's all of the ripping, which I've ripped these beds before so I didn't hit anything solid. Over here, got nice cracks and hole blocks. Over here, it more of destroyed the soil, but it also broke it. And what else I noticed, all these little white thread weeds that it brought up with it. Now if these are brought up and disturbed, they will die, which is really good. Because I mean, they are quite literally everywhere. And by looking at the surface of the soil, I honestly did not see anything. I do know that the hen bit is starting to come up, which is one of our major winter weeds. And it's starting to germinate, even though it's going to be 100 degrees next week. But that's besides the point. So, I mean, there you go. As simple as that. We've got 30 seconds plus getting the tractor out compared to which this will probably be two or three minutes to go all the way down this bed. Well, maybe five minutes. That's quite a long bed. And a lot of energy exerted, too. So, that's basically the pros and cons of the broad fork versus the rippers on the back of the tractor. We've got total devastated ground, but it brought up the white threads. Good shattered soil, which I could just work the top now. Or big giant wedges that had come up and I could cover this bed with compost and it would go down into the soil and bring good soil microbiology back into the bottom of the soil. So, honestly, it could be either way. I'm gonna have to put it with the way most people phrase things is use the method that works best in your farm and your circumstances. I can tell you, I would much prefer to use a broad fork and have that nice beautiful bed like that and use a tilter that only goes down that far and never bring up any grass or weed seeds and apply an inch and a half of compost every time I turn a bed. In all, all actuality, I do not have time to do that. Instead, I have to shortcut things around certain ways. One of those would be ripping with a tractor, just like this. Also come through with an old grandad's tra tractor with my little mini tiller on there and the lowest I can go is about two inches, which is about an inch deeper than I prefer. But it's just so much faster. I mean, that's what I've done this whole entire plot here. Like, I did these two beds and fertilized them in all of 30 minutes, maybe. If I was using the tilter and I did two full beds, it'd probably take me closer to an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Are the results the same? Yes and no. I'll have more weeding because I'm bringing up more weed seeds. But it's just, you know, whatever works best for your situation. So, hope it didn't confuse you all too much about that. I prefer that. My back prefers that. So, I'll let you all decide. Uh, be sure to comment down below. Hope you all like what you saw here today. You thought it was useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all. Have a good day.